and drawing out of and bringing out people, even as we have been brought out by the Lord through the work of others in the church in the past. Now, in Luke 4.14, I want you to understand something today. And I know this sermon is a little piecemeal. But there are some key things about the church I think that we're missing in our generation. There are some people who think because they've been around church and that sort of thing. That there's really, there, I'm not, there's not anything else much I'm going to get from it. Right? I've been in the Sunday school class. I, I've been in worship. I've done, there, there's really not much there. Okay. Are you more spiritually developed than Jesus Christ? There would be a lot of reasons maybe you would think you don't need to come to church. But guess where Jesus went, as was his custom, every Sabbath? Did he need to go to church? He didn't need to go to church, but where was he? He was in church. Because he had something to offer. He came and read scripture and explained it to you. You may not feel like that there's anything, any reason you may be, but in the eyes of God, if Jesus needs to be in church, guess what? So do we. If Jesus was going to participate in the Bible study, which is what he was doing, we need to also. We need so to do so much more than he did. And so we need to put aside the idea that the church is not essential. It is in fact important. It's one of the places that I was talking about at the beginning of this message now as we come to the end. Galatians chapter 6. Bear with him his burdens, and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Now, the other verse is there, so that you'll understand what the law of Christ is. But this is where the local church is best invested in the kingdom of God. As we look around us, and we see the needs around us, and we get involved. See, Jesus was involved in this. Now, how many of you know what I'm talking about when I say Marco Polo? I'm not talking about the game in the swimming pool, right? This is an actual person from the 13th century. Okay? How many of you know that he was simply doing what he saw his father doing? Marco Polo, yes. You see, his father and his uncle went to China first. When he was a kid. They came home. And when Marco Polo was 17. He was given the opportunity to go. And do what his father had been doing. To see what his father had been doing. And to be a part of that. <coughs> now somehow or another. Nobody knows Marco Polo's dad's name. But Marco Polo went with his father to China. He wound up being in that part of the world for 25 years before he came back. And in that time, you know what they said that Kublai Khan said about Marco Polo? He didn't want him to leave because he knew more about his kingdom because of the observations that Marco Polo made. You see, Marco Polo was representing Kublai Khan in the sense that he was traveling around China and he would see how things were going in a, in a region. He would go into a city and he would take observations and, and, and he would go back and, and respond to Kublai Khan to let him know what was going on. And, and it was so important to him that he didn't want Marco Polo to leave. Eventually, he was dismissed from the service. He came back to his country and, and fought in a, in a war and, and eventually wound up being captured and put in jail where he met a rival who sat down 
and took all of his adventures and all of his observations and wrote them down on his behalf. Does that sound familiar? You see, you have been watching God the Father at work in this place. And, and there's one in our midst today who's been here all 75 years. And as God has been at work, we have seen, we have observed all the things that are going on. And we have the opportunity to report, to speak to the people around us who do not know Christ, who have not received the Lord, to tell them the good news, to give them the observations of what we've seen God do in the midst of His people here in this place and in other places, and to share that word. Marco Polo watched what his father was doing. We need to be at work watching what the father is doing, but not just so we can watch, but so that we can join in that. And the first step, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, remember, unless we repent, Jesus said, we will all likewise perish. We have to acknowledge that we are sinners and that we want to turn away from that sin. We come to Him and ask Him to come into our life and to forgive us of our sins and, and to make us children of God. We believe in Him. We trust in Him because He is the only one who can save us. Amen. Peter in his message in the book of Acts says there is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved. So today, if you're planning on getting to heaven by your good works, if you're planning on because you're better than somebody else, at least getting a head start on them, if you think that you're going to go somewhere after this life and suffer and pay off a sin debt and then get to heaven, that's not how Jesus said it works. But as many as receive Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, even to those who would believe on His name. Not believe He exists, but believe Jesus, saying that He is the one who said it. And you would come to Him and to Him alone for your salvation today. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank You that You have put the church here for this purpose. And that you have called us as children of God to be immersed in what you are doing to minister to each other and to go after it here and share the good news with others. We thank you for that. We need family. And we need help and encouragement. But Lord, there may be some folks here today who need to become a part of the family. First of all, your family. To receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And right now, from their heart, they would just turn their thoughts toward you and, and they would say, Father in heaven, I do want Jesus. I know He died on the cross to pay for our sins. Jesus, would you come in and forgive me and change me? I want to be a child of God. I repent. I turn away from living my life my own way. Jesus, thank you for the promise that if I would believe and trust in you, you would save me. I receive you now. I don't deserve it. I'm a sinner like everybody else, but I receive you now. Thank you for your promise to save me. I believe your word is true. Now, Lord, there are others here today. You may be calling them to be a part of this church family. Uh, you may be speaking to some of our hearts about areas of repentance that are needed in our lives because we've let something become a stronghold. Some sin that's controlling things because we've given ourselves to it. Lord, we, we pray that you would hear the prayers of folks who are lifting up for your help to be delivered. Lord, we need your help with comfort today. There are those in this place who need great comfort and consolation by your spirit. We know you know every heart. Would you move in our midst and accomplish
accomplish your will, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done. Lord, we would thank you for that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In a moment, we're going to stand. But you know, standing up is not a big thing for this time. If you didn't stand up, it would be a problem. We're going to sing, but this is not about singing. This invitation is to join God where He's at work. If you pray to receive Christ to make that public, if you need to receive Christ, you would come and we pray about that. If you need to have deliverance from some struggle in your life, if you would ask God for His help and He would receive it. If God has called you to be a part of this church family, if God has called you to full-time Christian service, whatever it is, that's what this time is for. Do we understand that? This is the time we respond to God as we stand and sing. You come. Alas and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die.
to worship you, to give you honor and glory for uh, all that you are, all, all who you are, and all that you do, Lord. And thank you for that opportunity we have to uh, hear your word, uh, to hear about the the way that you're spreading the gospel, Lord, the way that you're using us to spread the gospel through the church, and that we're the church, Lord. Father, I thank you for 75 years with the Little Cypress Baptist Church being here, being planted to do your work, to do your service. Thank you for the, the way that you use people, Lord, to, uh, to do your will. Thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this video is a uh, parachute video for missions. So, okay. I Is there any sound? Is there a sound? Okay.